name is Anna Maria and I am 26 years old from uh, Dietno, which is in the northernmost part of Norwegian side of Sápmi. Okay. And I'm an artist and an activist. <laughs> <laughs> you have a history of activism. Yeah. Um, can you just in short tell me a little bit about this and what drives you? So I think I've kind of always been the type to do activism, <laughs> just personality-wise, but uh, it really started in my youth, uh, being an environmentalist, caring for climate, and I was really worried about climate change. As I grew a bit older, I could really see the connection between environmentalism and my own culture. Um, as we know, like, Indigenous peoples all around the world really do protect biodiversity. Yeah, indigenous rights protect biodiversity. Um, so I could really like see the link between actually preserving my own culture and doing that work and preserving nature. So that's kind of like the two pillars of my life, but still they're kind of like the same. I'm thinking about uh, the situation of the Sami people today, both yeah. in Norway, but in the whole of Sápmi. What would you say the biggest threats or struggles yeah. are at the moment? I mean, for me, without a doubt, I would say the biggest threats to the Sami people in our culture right now is the threats to our lands and our claims to the lands. And um, there are like so many indus industrial projects that kind of dig in to our very valuable areas and um, cabin building, road building, uh, wind power plants, um, mining, uh, I mean of course like oil but also um, how do you say updrett, you know fisheries where they feed fish. Like the fish farms? <laughs> yeah, the fish farms. All of those things, like bit by bit, steal our lands, which really affects our um, uh, primary industries, like the reindeer herding and the traditional fisheries. And of course, without our lands and without our, our waters and our rivers, we are nothing. Like all indigenous people, we are so connected to the forest and the mountains. So if you harm the forest, the mountains, the rivers, you harm us. How does it make you feel? Um, it, I, I, I struggle a lot with like anger and rage, but I try to use those feelings and kind of canalize the energy towards something constructive. And I feel like activism is a really um, kind of a good relief of all that emotion, I think all oppressed people should resist. And not only because that's the right thing to do, but because it's it's good for my soul, I think, to mm -hmm. resist. I think I kind of protect my soul in some way and I protect uh, my integrity uh, by doing activism. So it's kind of also healing. Mm -hmm. At the same time, while it's exhausting. <laughs> um, yesterday, during your concert, yeah. you showed the finger to the <laughs> oil and energy minister yeah. uh, of Norway, Terje Asland. Yeah. Can you tell me about that? What was going through your head? Um, I didn't give so much thought into the specific finger. I have this kind of humorous song about the energy minister which i kind of call this track and uh, i find it like a really happy song at the same time which i really want people to dance to so it just was kind of like a a funny like dig at him uh, which he knows about and i think is fine with <laughs> i think just like he's in one of the most powerful positions in norway and he is responsible for violating human rights of the Sami people and me as an artist and as an activist with no formal power at all I feel like I need to use my voice in every way possible to gain attention to the 
causes that I'm fighting for and and music and music and humor and kind of putting things on the edge um, is a way of doing that. There are struggles going on all over Sápmi. If you would have a message to the Sámi people all oh. over Sápmi, yeah, what would that be? I would say the message would be like um, the only thing that has determined that we're still here or the only reason that we are still here is because our ancestors have resisted and uh, we have resisted so uh, many hardships and um, and oppressors uh, in different forms and different states during different times and I just think uh, it's a necessity that we honor our ancestors by continuing that fight, by continuing standing up for who we are, for our language and for our claims to the land. And, um, and even though that can feel like a burden, it is also a gift to be born into such a community with so much power, like internal power, uh, not formal power, political power, unfortunately. But also, it is a gift to be born into a culture that is so rich and that is so um, kind and so um, respectful of nature and our surroundings. And I just think focusing sometimes on those gifts instead of um, the hard parts <laughs> is, is a good way to keep yourself going. And then always remembering that you're never on your own. You always have your relatives to lean on and your, your ancestors to talk to. Mm. And if you would uh, send out a message to the other people living yeah. in the Nordics mm. uh, in this area who aren't Sami, yeah. how should we recognize what you're going through? Yeah, what should we do? I, I would say two things, two messages. <laughs> so the first thing would be acknowledging the assimilation process that the Nordic states have been responsible for is a really important part of acknowledging yourself as a person, understanding where you're coming from and how your state and your nation has, has harmed other people. I think neglecting that and refusing to see that you actually rob yourself of um, the truth but also your own history and I think it's a beautiful thing daring to acknowledge the past, apologize for the past and step forward with vowing to do better than, than those before you. I think that's a really powerful thing that I would encourage everyone to do. And the second thing is that I don't think people should be allowed <laughs> to enjoy Sami music, enjoy Sami culture, food, or or like even like souvenirs and like selling the Sami culture in, in like a tourist attraction kind of way if you are not willing to acknowledge our claims to these lands or acknowledge the fight, the ongoing fight for our rights. I don't think you should be allowed to do both. <laughs> do you believe that there is a, an ignorance going on at yeah. the moment? We take the good parts but leave the... I, I'm, I'm going to speak on behalf of like Norway as I see it because like here is obviously where I've had my career and, and I've, I've really enjoyed kind of career-wise, uh, the gained attention and interest in Sami culture, but it's also a sadness to see how willing people are to uh, hear more yoik because it's exotic and wow, we look so gorgeous with our national clothing and everything, but then are not willing to listen to me when I talk about our very like traumatizing history mm. do you know what i mean it it kind of it becomes kind of uh uncomfortable to perform how do you deal with that uh i get mad and then i act on the, the fury <laughs> and i go 
chain myself to something and shut down some buildings and so do activism. Mm -hmm.